In the upcoming films, we are turning our attention to Moses. Could Moses have written an eyewitness account of the Exodus as the Bible claims? And if he did, which route did he take the Israelites on? What sea was crossed and what mountain did they journey to? Today on the Thinker Update, we're going to talk about an interesting new book called The Lost Sea of the Exodus. It is written by geographer Dr. Glenn Fritz. And if you love maps and charts and ancient texts, including the Bible, you will love this second edition of this book. The first time I had the opportunity to meet Glenn Fritz was back in 2002. We met at the home of Jim and Penny Caldwell, a couple who had lived in Saudi Arabia for over a decade while Jim worked in the oil industry. What brought all of us together was our common interest in investigating the historical credibility of the Exodus. You might ask, how is the Bible story related to Saudi Arabia? Well, this goes back to our reference in the second chapter of Exodus, where it states that after Pharaoh learned that Moses had killed an Egyptian taskmaster, he tried to kill him. So Moses fled to the land of Midian. Archaeologists and scholars know where this ancient land is, and it's located in the northwest corner of what is known today as Saudi Arabia. But in ancient times, it was known as Midian. In recent times, some scholars have been very interested in these areas of ancient Midian as the potential location for Mount Sinai. Could this be where Moses would have brought the Israelites? One of the most well-known proponents of this idea was the late Frank Moore Cross, who studied at John Hopkins University under William F. Albright, the founding father of biblical archaeology. Cross later became the professor of Hebrew at Harvard Divinity School and was a member of the International Committee responsible for editing the Dead Sea Scrolls. Although he was interested in ancient Midian, it is my understanding that Dr. Cross was never granted permission to explore the sites in this region, since Saudi Arabia limits access to outsiders. But in 2003, Dr. Fritz found a way for a small group of us to enter Saudi Arabia on a cultural exchange trip to see the geography for ourselves. By the way, this is the same area where the famous Sir Lawrence of Arabia operated a century earlier. And now we were some of the very few people who have ever had the privilege to experience this lonely yet beautiful desert landscape. Jim and Penny Caldwell were also on this trip and they believed there was a pattern of evidence that matched the biblical story that still existed in the ancient land of Midian. Yet others, including well-known scholars, believe that evidence pointed in other directions for the location of the real Mount Sinai. I hope to investigate all of these options in upcoming films. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Before the Israelites reached the mountain, it is written that they were trapped at a sea by Pharaoh and his army. If the Bible story is true, then the question remains, where did this happen? At the border lakes of Egypt, or could it have been the Gulf of Suez, or even the Gulf of Aqaba? Most English Bibles use the term Red Sea for the sea that the Israelites crossed, but the original Hebrew term used in the Bible is Yam Suf. Yam means sea, but there has been great debate about the meaning of the word Suf, as well as which body of water this could be. Here is a segment from one of my interviews with Dr. Glenn Fritz. The first question that most people ask is, where is Mount Sinai? As a geographer, the first question I ask is, where is the sea that was crossed? Because its location determines where one would look for the mountain. Here is the Gulf of Aqaba, which was the Yam Suf of Hebrew scriptures. It was a major landmark defining the eastern Sinai Peninsula, the southern extent of the Promised Land, and the coast of Midian in Arabia. In the Bible, the location of Yam Suf is also linked with Edom, which was located here in the mountains of modern western Jordan. This same Yam Suf cannot simultaneously be associated with Egypt, 170 miles here to the west. The reason that the Septuagint scholars assigned the Red Sea term to Yam Suf is because it was the only sea in the region that they knew of, other than the Mediterranean. They relied on the knowledge of the Greek geographers. The interesting thing is that the Greek geography excluded the Gulf of Aqaba, which was the biblical Yam Suf. The legacy of this era can be seen on this map made in 1626. Here we see the Red Sea drawn as a single shaft of water with no Gulf of Aqaba. We can see another example from 1805, the Red Sea and no Gulf of Aqaba. 
And also on this map from 1822, we see the Red Sea, but guess what's missing? The Gulf of Aqaba. If you're a thinker and you want to explore these issues more deeply, then you're going to want to get The Lost Sea of the Exodus. It's a beautifully bound book that explores Dr. Fritz's ideas for the identity of the sea that best fits the biblical criteria and the reasons it became lost. This new second edition also presents his views of the likely exodus route between Egypt and the sea, with fresh light thrown on mysterious biblical locations. It's a map lover's dream come true, with nearly 200 maps, charts, and other imagery, all with supporting explanations. We're so happy that Glenn took the painstaking effort to create this wonderful resource, and as always, you can decide for yourself the strength of this argument.